about a month ago, Bill Maher had Chris DiStefano on his podcast, which leads to a rare moment where Bill is actually confronted by the reality of Jesus, which leads to a rather interesting debate about his existence. But they both get a number of things wrong. So I'm going to highlight those throughout the video and I'm going to talk about them on the back end with you and create some discussion. With that being said, let's get into it. I believe in Jesus, by the way. We'll talk about that. Oh. I'm reading that's, The Case for Christ by Lee Strobel. It's hey, convincing I, I, evidence. I, what do you think? I throw people out of the club here? If they're, you believe in whatever you want. I, I didn't. I went to Catholic school my whole life. But after reading this book, Case for Christ by Lee Strobel, the factual evidence that he existed is kind of overwhelming. I'd like to see that because the factual evidence that he existed has always been underwhelming. In fact, it's always... Read Case for Christ. <clears throat> Yeah, I Give will. it a shot by Lee Strobel. Uh, this is based on what? Archaeological finds? Archaeological finds. New uh, ones? Theological <laughs> finds. Are, Ivy Le what are theological finds? The Bill, ready for this? Yeah. The If I told you, okay, Alex, if I told you factual evidence about Alexander the Great, you would believe me. Okay, but it, it, even still, it's a it's a silly point because who cares if Jesus lived? It's whether he's then died and re was reborn and is you know up in heaven with his father, who's really him. Okay, that's the True. part that where the rubber meets but, the road. Uh, Maybe he existed. I agree. That's fine. absolutely possible. Fine. He may have existed. But, but according to Case for Christ, independent sources who didn't know each other, who wrote about him within twenty years of his death, talked about these miracles happening as in real time. Okay, well, again. And here, Alexander the Great's biographers, I, the earliest one was like 100 years after okay. he died. Chris, I'm well, going to have to bust, burst your bubble now because here, here's, I have to spit a couple of facts at you that are kind of like gonna under. Okay. It's Hollywood. There's only two sources in the Bible. Okay. There's the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Okay. And there's and also another guy, Josephus, who wasn't accepted, but read not, the case for Christ. Not in the Bible. Okay, okay. But the Bible is itself an anthology. They're, they found some few decades ago the Dead Sea Scrolls, right. which Got were other books that were just basically edited out. So right away we know a person decided what constituted the Bible and just some stuff wound up on the cutting room floor. I get it. Council so, of Nicaea. I get it. Council of Nicaea, yes. 325 AD. Yes. That's when they decided the Christian right. religion. I agree <clears throat> with you. Right. I do, I'm, I'm with I, you I on that. I remember that. that. But I'm telling you, read this book. That's, that's Emperor Constantine. Shout out the, Constantine, Turkey, all that. Well, the first one. The Constantinople. First, well, the first, yes, the first one to change the Roman Empire right. to a Christian empire. They decided all took the three, holidays. Took three centuries. I get it. And, okay. And listen, Bill, but, I'm with you <clears> on that. But here's the important point. Let's do it. There's only <laughs> there's only these five sources. A little bit more tequila, that's it. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I'm wrecked right now. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Good boys. Not contemporaries of Jesus. Not even close. Matthew. Okay. So they lived from 70 to 110 years after him. I understand. No, that. no, no. From 40 to 70 years but after. But they got their information from Josephus, who lived about <clears throat> 10 years after Jesus. So already we're into a game of telephone. Okay. Bill, yes, but the, but the other. I, I want to make you let you be point, but let me just t just quickly. The game of telephone. Yes, I agree with you that point. But the game of telephone, in Jesus's times, according to Lee Strobel in the case of Christ, was the simple fact of we're playing the game of telephone. There's ten people here. The game of telephone, as we know it today, is you say something in my ear, and then it goes around ten times, and by the time it gets to you, it's something radically different. This game of telephone, this ancient game of telephone, was. But you tell it to me, then the third guy confirms what you said before it goes to the fourth guy. So there's a level oh. of checking, if, of if, checks and balances. Chris, Chris, you're working too hard. If you want to believe this shit, believe it. You don't have to convince me or I'm just convinced or, 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 con or construct this scaffolding to which you hang this belief. Just believe it. It's all good. Okay. I but it's Don't come to me and when you die at St. Peter's, I'm not getting you in. But <laughs> but you know, I can't, <laughs> I can't go there with you. It's just, you know, it's silly. And Well, I'm, I'm and just and saying I'm just, I, it's it's <clears throat> nice the idea to believe in something. I'm just trying. Trying it on for size. Here's also what's very interesting. <clears throat> and then I'll leave this subject. Is, <clears throat> excuse me. I think I've bored the audience with this before, but what do you think? Barbara in Milwaukee gives a fuck. They turned this off. They when they turned this off when they found out I wasn't Ellen. Yeah, like that's the kind of audience we have. Um, <laughs> Your so, audience is great. So uh, I think they'll, you think they'll like me. Saint Paul, good guy. Saint is, Paul, uh, A.K.A. Saul. 
is and the, the capital of Minnesota is the uh, other source of the Bible. Yes, there's Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John. I said the two names out of order because that's the order in the Bible. The first gospel, Mark, is 70 A.D. Jesus dies in 33, so that's 40 years almost after he died. Okay, so not contemporaries. Paul comes before the gospel writers. He's writing around the year 50, in the 50s. Okay. So he's much closer to Jesus's time. So you'd think he would know more about Jesus than the people who came later, but actually St. Paul knows almost nothing about Jesus. He barely conceives of him as something that, as a person who lived on earth. There's no details about his life like they are in the gospels. So the people who came later know more than the person who wrote earlier. Just some food for thought. But, okay, I, I understand, but he does acknowledge at some point, right? Paul, a.k.a. Saul, knows yes. that Jesus existed, right? He, he talks about he him. He talks about, I'm saying he conceives him as a Godhead. He doesn't have this, it's not the narrative that's in the Gospels of Jesus went around and he did miracles and he did stuff and everybody okay, loved there... him and he gets quoted a lot. He makes speeches, blessed are the meek. You know, he has adventures, he goes into the desert. It's a whole thing. But what about- And then at the end, it's a whole drama with, you know, he's crucified. Oh, no, Paul doesn't know any of this. All the stuff that the gospel writers obsess about and that are his biography. It's a little strange. But maybe, but Paul, it's okay for Paul to be somebody who maybe, uh, there was a lot of people who didn't like Jesus you know back what's then, okay? and that's okay. What's okay is that some people believe and other people don't. That's what's okay. It's like, that's you. Yeah. And, and I'm not trying to put it on you. I'm just saying what I believe I in. know, I know. And I'm wearing a corduroy shirt my mother got me for Christmas and I feel confident. They talked about a lot of cool things here, but there are five main key mistakes that I really want to set straight with y'all. It's very important. The first one happened when Bill mistakenly stated that there are only two sources for Jesus being the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and the letters of Paul. Now, there's roughly 11 independent sources who contribute to the, the historical narrative of Jesus. Some of the more prevalent ones are Tacitus, a Roman historian, Josephus, a Jewish historian, uh, Pliny the Younger, who is a Roman governor, and then Suetonius, who is another Roman historian. The second one happened when Bill wrongly asserted that the Old Testament shows evidence of there being books added and removed, which is just simply not true. Every book of the Old Testament has fragments contained in the Dead Sea Scroll collection, except the book of Esther, which likely just didn't survive and decomposed. But even if it didn't, the book of Esther contains no theological essential doctrine and in fact, it's one of the only, no, it is the only book in the Old Testament that makes no explicit reference to God or any religious rit rituals, which means that there's really no religious motive for them to remove it anyways. The third error came from Chris when he asserted and affirmed that the Council of Nicaea was the council that pretty much established the Christian religion. And, but this is a common misconception, and it's actually one that I had myself before I worked on this video. But in reality, the council was focusing on Found, doing foundational work on theological matters, like clearly defining and outlining the nature of Christ, talking about the doctrine of the Trinity, rather than actually deciding the canon of the Bible or determining the existence of Jesus. The fourth one's a kind of a small one, but Bill said that Emperor Constantine was the one who initially converted the Roman Empire into a Christian empire, but it's just simply not true. It actually happened under Emperor Theodosius I in the year 380 AD. The fifth and final error comes from Bill when he asserted that Paul knows little to nothing about Jesus, but it's not true. If you look in his writings in the letters to the churches, he is he clearly knows about Jesus' existence and emphasizes key events like his life, burial, death, resurrection, and his appearance to disciples in the famous passage 1 Corinthians 15, 3 to 8. And on top of that, if we just look at Paul's letters in context, we see that they are written to a certain people group for a specific reason, to these early Christian churches to, ex to extrapolate theological issues with them, but also just to encourage them in their faith. It is not meant to be a historical account of the ministry of Jesus like the Gospels are. So these were the five errors that I found in this discussion. It was a very interesting discussion. I think it's an important one. But if you want to learn more about the evidence for God or Jesus, I recommend checking out the video on screen right about here. Have a great day. Bye-bye.